Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Max Episode 3. Yes, finally. My apologies for the long delay. Life has, uh, has not been kind recently. <laughs> but we're finally getting down to the testing of the Wismec RX Machina. Uh, but first I want to thank my patrons who are making all of this testing possible by supporting me full time for more than two weeks every month, which gives me the ability to set up this kind of testing and, and do it. So we're going to be diving into a lot of it. Uh, I do want to do a quick recap of what is actually happening here. And all of it's set up really to eliminate variables that happen when we're testing using coils and batteries. And what I've got is substituting for battery is a 60 amp power supply set to 3.5 volts, though it really doesn't matter. Drawing the current acting as a coil is this electronic load here, which is set to 30 amps. And I'm gonna use 30 amps instead of 35 because 18650s uh, peak at uh, 30 amps. I've got a button set to activate the electronic load and I'm doing that because I want to close the contacts of the mech, press the button and then fire the current so I don't get any arcing damage because I want to eliminate that variable also until later. And what we'll read here is the voltage across the mech. Right now it's 3.5 volts because well there's nothing attached uh, to the RDA uh, so you get the full voltage across it. Um, we got the battery that will pass through here, through the mod, via the solid aluminum slug, so the current will go down and come back out, go through the electronic load, which is drawing the current, and back to, quote, the battery, which is this power supply. And then the meter reads across the posts of the RDA, which is a cosmonaut, of which I've got the white wires are the power leads, the black and red wire are going to here. So this is the basic setup uh, for the electronics people out there. This is a ground reference resistor, so this reads correctly when the contacts are open. For everybody else, you're just going, what? But that's okay. Um, something that I'll be doing for every mech is recording the data. I'll be doing five button presses for each different set. Normal pressure and then extreme pressure to see what the absolute lowest resistance is. I'll be tossing out the highest and lowest uh, value a voltage what I read and getting an average and also getting the range of it and we'll also be doing it 18650 and 2700s where possible for any mech. Now the black on this, the ugly ugly black on this, is just grip tape. to just give me a slightly more uh, consistent grip not sliding so I get more consistent uh, pressure. Now the first thing I want to do though is just a side experiment with this mod and with every mod. Don't want to strip the o-ring that's in here. And that is measure the resistance of the tube. Da, da, da. Okay. Okay, right, fingerprints all over it. And what we'll first do is use this micro ohm meter. And what you f first thing you want to do always is make sure you're at zero ohms when you connect the leads together. And we are at zero, which is very awesome. And that's 0 .000 milliohms, namely micro ohms. So let's take a couple of readings on here. Now, as an O-ring flies off. And we'll do multiple readings on this also. Okay, 2.039. And yeah, the, a lot of people want to see what the testing is. And uh, you know what? Testing is really, really boring. But I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. We're also going to reverse this. Same distance in each time for each mod and rotating a little bit. You want to add, you just want to start to check to make sure that you can start trusting your numbers. If you get consistency, pretty good consistency in your readings, odds are your testing methodology is good. If your readings are all over the place, you've got an issue. Okay, so we're averaging about two milliohms for the tube. We're going to find out if that means anything um, uh, in the future when we start looking at other mods, uh, whether that's a, a big number or not. And uh, just to see, because I was concerned of all these cutouts here, does that really make a difference in resistance? And also the metal, <laughs> the metal is a little bit thinner. Is this, what am I missing here? Thank you. It's not. Okay, and we're going to put it all back together and start up. Now the inside of this Cosmonaut RDA is potted with epoxy, 
so I don't get any stress. I spent two days uh, tightening it down every few hours to make sure there was no uh, fatigue creep. You know, the metal when it's still cold flow and you retighten it, the metal will cold flow and you retighten it. So I'm confident that the connection's as tight as possible. Get this out of here. 2700s first. We're going to do what I call normal button pressing pressure and also quote normal tightening that I would do. Uh, since it tightens onto the sleeve, we're also going to try it with the sleeve out. And then what we do is we're looking at the numbers here and those will be the numbers that I'm recording. And what I'll do is I'll be pressing the button on the mech, close the contacts and then firing it. And you'll see this go to 30 amps and this say 30 amps also. And we'll read the voltage across here. So first one. Now we see zero volts across the contacts, almost, it's electronic noise. 0 0.43. 0.46. There's going to be some variability here. 0.47. And I'm not recording to the third decimal place because it just gets silly with all the variability. 0 0.46. 0 0.46. Okay, fantastic. Now what we're going to do is max pressure where I'm really going to crank on it and see, does that make a difference? Namely, can we improve the performance of this if we're, you know, King Kong, we're able to mash it down. And we're going to just really smash on these and we'll read the voltage off. And there is 0.30. It's about, what, 30% decrease in voltage drop. 0 0.3, 0 0.29. And I would expect this to be pretty consistent because I'm pressing about us. Oh, that's interesting. I'm slightly off in how level I was. And now the numbers jumped. 0 0.43. 0 0.37. and 0.34. So this is nearly, not nearly as consistent as I thought it would be, and it may not be as useful because we ranged from 0.29 volts up to uh, 0.43 volts, and I was pushing down pretty well about as equally as I could. But the thing with using, pressing it against here is maybe if it's slightly off, if I'm not perfectly flat, then I'm just pushing down at one side. And what we're seeing is the difference between going flat totally and at an angle. So I may do some tests with this at an angle and just really starting to explore that. But this is just other data. Most of what I'm concerned about is the regular finger press. Okay, now let's try without the sleeve and see if, since when we tighten, we're tightening down onto the sleeve and you can feel it. Uh, let's take the sleeve off and see what the numbers turn into because it lets it, lets us tighten it down a little bit further and you can feel it. It doesn't uh, keep tightening, tightening, tightening. You just feel it go snap. Whoa. A little interesting sound. What was that? Okay. Aha! 0 0.21. And before we were, uh, that's about one half the resistance where we were before because we were about 0 0.43. 0 0.22. 0 0.23. I'll call it. Let me just dry my hand off. It is getting it is slippery here without a grip tape. 0 0.23. 0 0.26. And 0 0.28. And my hand's starting to get tired there with trying to keep from sliding and pressing, but uh, look, I'm throwing out the high and the low, so we'll be able to get rid of anything that's a problem. So numbers are a lot lower for that. Now let's try 18650. 
and I'm going to go back to the sleeve because that's the normal way of using it. And we'll just be able to compare 2700 to 18650 with the Wismec adapter. Oops. Okay, and the first one, 0.32, ah, 0 0.41, 0 0.40, it's about the same as the 2700, which is actually what I would expect. Six. Point four seven. And I'm not going to do without the sleeve and max pressure because I'm going to do separate tests on that. So what this has given us is about a two ohm resistance. And I'm, I'll, I'll post um, in the video the final table and have a link for it. Uh, with the sleeve and normal button press, we're at about 0 0.46, 0 0.47. Quote, max pressure was around 0 0.3, 0 0.35 or so, would have jumped to 0 0.43. Uh, 2700 without the sleeve, we dropped from the 0.4 something down to 0 0.2 something. So with, I think shortening the sleeve on this so you can feel it, you know, metal to metal, <coughs> tighten up, can significantly improve performance. I'm not going to do without the sleeve and max pressure because no one's going to run it like that. And then 18650, and this is not max pressure, this was normal. We're running at uh, oh, low point fours, at about the same. It actually, well, it's close. I'd have to do like 50 or 60 presses, but it's pretty close to the 2700, which is what I would expect because there's just not that much metal or, diff or uh, stuff interfering with current flow in this adapter. It's just this little button here. So I certainly wouldn't be afraid of it causing any fundamental differences. You know, pick the battery you want to use and don't be afraid of this. And that is our first Mac test. I appreciate your patience. I'll have links for this here. And uh, we'll get to going into, I believe, the Dreamer is going to be next in four, count them, four metals with the uh, four, count them again, four different pin types, which will be awesome because now we can compare platings and metals and et cetera and so forth and start to compare two resistances of the mods themselves against the machina. Thank you for watching.